ABC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, just jumping on board to give a congratulations and celebrate uh, Richard McCook, his uh, three year anniversary in the VC. Um, a lot of times as I, as I find these threads and contests, I saw some responses that a couple other people had done and really liked the questions and wanted to kind of jump on board and come over and uh, give Richard a congratulations and, and jump on board. So let's just kind of dive right into it. Uh, it's a celebration of three years, so there's three questions revolving around three. And so question number one is pick three artists from your collection that show their best and worst album. Uh, and, and as he kind of pointed out within his video, you know, worse not being it's garbage, but just if you have to rank them, what's, what, what would you say is the worst? So I tried to go with some artists that maybe I don't talk about as much, as well as artists I had at least five studio albums by. So the first one that I'm going to kind of do a ranking with is Lenny Kravitz. Definitely an artist I've loved for quite some time. And uh, I actually had a hard time deciding which was his my favorite album so I pulled them both out and said I was gonna decide right at the minute I made the video and I think I'm gonna go with uh, I think I'm gonna go with Let Love Rule probably my, my favorite Lenny Kravitz album and even though it doesn't necessarily have like if I think about my top five favorite Lenny Kravitz songs they are not on this album you know it's, it's more of his kind of rock slash you know kind of psychedelic he feel type of stuff old school rock stuff you know like dig in and are you gonna go my way and uh, you know the stuff like maybe even like I belong to you on and on and on but uh, like I said my top five Lenny Kravitz songs aren't even on this album but this is definitely from start to finish my favorite Lenny album to listen to uh, it's a little more kind of mellow. He doesn't really go into his rock stuff on this. It's a much more slow tempo, laid back album from start to finish. And uh, it's kind of actually interesting to see where his career went from this album, where he really kind of just picked up his, his heaviness, if you will. But fantastic album, beautiful stuff on there. So I would say that's probably my favorite. Uh, the runner up it was competing against what it was Lenny. So I guess I have to say as of this very moment, this is my second favorite Lenny album. But uh, my least favorite out of all of his stuff, I would probably have to go with this one here, which is Ray's Foundation, which is from 2018, actually. So it's kind of, you know, one of his more recent releases. But it really is a, it's a good album. It's a good listen. There's not like any one or two particular songs. It's like all of a sudden, oh, that's making its way into my top 10, of you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's just kind of Lenny doing Lenny with Lenny flavor, you know, so it's definitely a, a good listen. But if I had to rank all my Lenny albums, this is definitely the one I would have to put towards the end in that regard. But awesome, awesome artist. So next I'm going to go with is going to be Ice Cube. I thought that'd be another good one. And to me, Ice Cube, because you know he has a ton of different albums that are out, but really this revolves around um, basically five albums, which is America's Most Wanted, uh, Lethal Injection, Predator, and Death Certificate, and Bootleg and B-Sides. Like to me, those five albums are Ice Cube. So those are the ones that I'm choosing between here. Um, so when I think about my favorite out of all of those, ironically, I, actually I shouldn't say that ironically, but um, Ice Cube bootlegs and B-sides, I think this is my favorite Ice Cube album, uh, which basically all this album is, is songs off of those albums I just named, for, I mean, for the most part, just remixed versions. But the remixed versions, if you saw my last video, what I was talking about with EPMD and stuff like that, he basically kind of went and just remixed them with beats that were and uh, samples that were just kind of the old school electric kind of heavy thicker funk type of stuff and it just with Cube's vocal delivery the it, like it just mm, just a, like a match made in heaven so he improved so much in my opinion on what were already great fantastic songs he actually took them to another level on bootlegs and b-sides so definitely still my favorite Ice Cube album and when I look at the five that I mentioned, and this was kind of shocking to me actually, if I had to put them in order, the one that would be at the bottom of my list would be America's Most Wanted. And before I even started thinking about answering this question, you know, I actually would have thought this would have been 
maybe my pick for my favorite Ice Cube albums. It was, it was kind of interesting, but I just pulled all five albums out and I was just looking at the track listing and thinking about them. And when I was just, I was like, no, this would actually be the one that I would, I would put last out of those five. Yeah, and you know that's saying a lot because this is a freaking fantastic, legendary album right there. But, uh, and then the third one I picked, third group I decided to do was Accept. Again, another group that's had a, a long, long, you know, history from the early, early 80s, you know, and still putting out music last year, you know, new albums coming out. So my favorite album by them, I would say, again, especially thinking about just listening to from front to back, Blood of Nations. And this came out in 2010. Uh, which again for a group that has been around for so long of course they had Udo in the early years and you know wasn't with them anymore but but still the one thing that was so magical about this album to me was it came out in 2010 and it was such a flashback to old school except metal and I just absolutely love the vibe that came off of this album um, with songs like uh, you know Teutonic Terror and just, I mean, just all all kinds of fantastic stuff. Great, great album. So that's probably my favorite by Accept. My least favorite, if I if I, if I was ranking them all, would probably have to go to Eat the Heat. And this is uh, from 1989. Now again, you know I don't keep anything in my collection I don't actually you know like, um, but at the same time. It's very easy to see on this album, which came out in 1989, with Accept being so big in the early 80s. And, well, let's put it this way. The, coming out in 89, I really feel like this album is one where they kind of got lost in what was going on between glam, hair metal, and all of that. It's kind of like they weren't glammy enough to where they were able to compete or deal with what your Motley Crues and Poisons and Warrants and all of them were doing and weren't melody friendly enough to deal with with that. They also weren't able to kind of deal with what was going on since 1986 had kicked in with you know Slayer and and uh, with everything that was released by you know like Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth and, and how Thrash was starting to take a little hold with the heavier stuff, Maiden. And this album just really kind of feels like they got caught in between and just really didn't know what to do. Uh, so I think that's kind of, the fact that you can sense that to me is kind of what makes it one of my least favorite albums right there, but uh, least favorite by by them in their catalog. But still, definitely worth the listen and um, you know, all except is good except, in my opinion. Love that band. So question number two, show three albums um, yeah, oh, three albums you have on CD, but would love on vinyl or vice versa. And I think I misread that question. When I first read it, I was thinking three albums that I have on CD that have not been pressed on vinyl, or I wish they would press on vinyl, and not just my want list. So I think I kind of answered that question wrong, but um, so that's how I'm taking the stuff I would like to have pressed on vinyl or have reissued on vinyl. Uh, and I didn't want to use the same ones that I always talk about, you know, because Godsmack, Awake, Faceless, and Four are is on the top of my list. And if the labels came to me today and say, we'll press anything you want to have pressed, Brandon, what do you want? It would be the second, third, and fourth Godsmack album, without question. Uh, and then also, I just had to show this, otherwise I wouldn't feel comfortable, that Seal, this, out, this one in Seal 4 on top of my list. Now I got my cores out of the way, three that kind of came to mind that I would really love to have pressed on vinyl. E-40 The Mailman, uh, just one of my absolute, well my totally my favorite album by him. Um, and you know they pressed his sophomore album, they pressed a lot of other stuff by him. He, I think, uh, whatchamacallit, Vinyl Me Please just did uh, a pressing of um, um, the whole, Hall of Game, I think, and so, you know, awesome stuff, but for whatever reason, they just have not touched this album, and this without question is his best album. Uh, every single song on here is fantastic, just another one that kind of goes back to my youth and a, a tape that I just played to no end. So that's one I like to have pressed on vinyl. I thought it was kind of fun as I was flipping through my CDs, thinking about the question in the way that I was thinking about it, of wanting to have things pressed. 
And we've done that over the years, and I thought it was kind of cool because so many things that I can remember saying I wish they would press that on vinyl has been pressed, and I have in my collection. So they've actually been doing a pretty good job, I guess, of getting back to stuff, especially that 90s stuff. But this is one they still haven't touched yet. Uh, Paula Cole, This Fire, one that I would love, love, love to have on vinyl. Um, you know, very well known, obviously, for the big hits like I Don't Want to Wait or Where Have All the Cowboys Gone. But songs like, you know, Me, Tiger, Hush, Hush, Hush. I mean, from front to back, this is a fantastic album. And it's just, it's one of those 90s albums I just wish they would get around to putting on vinyl. Not to mention, I would just love seeing that artwork on a, on a 12 by 12. It would be really cool. So, And the third album I would love to have actually pressed on vinyl would be Yes I Am by Melissa Etheridge. Uh, now I shouldn't say press, it's been pressed before, but you're gonna pay $150 or $200 to get a, a nice copy of it. Uh, so I guess reissue is the better, better word. But um, yeah, I mean like Yes I Am is just, oh, just so fantastic. You can get her first couple albums on vinyl, which by far are not her best. They've been doing more of her recent stuff that comes out, but the in-between where she was killing it, where she was kind of at her peak, if you will, they just will not get back around to doing that stuff. So, yeah, yes I am. I mean, I would even take uh, Your Little Secret. I actually pulled both of these out thinking, you know, I'll figure out which one to choose, but just any of that Melissa middle ground era would just be awesome. So those would be my three artists there. And question number three, show three artists where the best of is really all you need. Another really good question. So the three I came up with, one, Kenny Rogers, 21 number ones. And saying all you need is not saying there's not a ton of great B-sides and stuff like that that you'll get by going to their studio albums. But just kind of saying you'll get a lot of the, you know, the flavor, the greatness, and just an album that will keep you really, really happy and experiencing this artist if you hadn't, if you never did pick up anything else. And Kenny Rogers' 21 number ones is definitely one that's right on that list. You know, you, you get a few B-sides on here that maybe people aren't as familiar with, but of course you get the Gambler, Lady, um, you know, Islands in the Stream, all the gigantic hits that everyone tends to know. Uh, my favorite song on here is, um, Love Will Turn You Around. It's awesome, awesome track, but just a great, great listen here. Great, great album. Kenny 21. Uh, another greatest hits that I think could be all you need. Wilson Pickett's greatest hits. Just a fantastic two LP set. Uh, and with the and with the length of some of the songs and the way the album is cut, I mean, it sounds great but they were also able to squeeze in quite a, quite a few tracks on this. So again, again, there's tons of Wilson that you want to hear, but if you only ever had this greatest hits, you know, you'll definitely just have a chance to experience all the greatness of Wilson Pickett. So everything from his gigantic hits, like in the Midnight Hour, Mustang Sally, 6345789, on and on and on, um, to stuff like Hey Jude, uh, I'm in love, I found a true love, you keep me hanging on. I mean, just, mm. Matter of fact, I am going to spend this as soon as I click the stop button on this video. And the album is just so fantastic. So if you didn't have any other Wilson, that's definitely all you would need. And my third pick is Matchbox 20, Exile on Mainstream. And again, with a band that has you know, a number of big records and a lot of hits and so forth, I think from a greatest hits perspective, this is kind of all you would need. Again, not saying you should not go check out their albums because there's fantastic stuff you would miss, but if you had to only have a greatest hits, this would be pretty solid. And I think the good thing about this is that uh, yourself or someone like you was really kind of their gigantic album and had you know four or five just major like, huge hits on it. And in my opinion, their albums that followed, great albums, but it was a hit here and a hit there on what were overall, you know, decent, good albums. And that basically what this greatest hits is, is it's yourself or someone like you. It's all of the great stuff off of that. And then those small nuggets from the albums that came after that were fantastic. So I think that makes it a, a nice, nice one to have. 
I mean, not as easy to find on vinyl, of course, so that might be a little bit of a challenge, but it's also, I mean, I have the CD of it as well, so it's pretty, you know, easy to get your hands on that. But yeah, I think that's a greatest hits that, that would kind of cover a good chunk of your, your Matchbox 20 needs. So uh, anyway, there you go, Richard, man. Again, congratulations on the three years. That's absolutely huge. And uh, let me know what you think. And as always, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care of you, see.